As a Niners fan and a forever optimist, I'm always looking for ways for the Niners to get number six. And I've done this throughout my whole entire life, despite the Niners never actually winning a Super Bowl during my lifetime. And recently, today, I was scrolling through my pages and I found this article from the Bleacher Report. It says a formula to predict next year's Super Bowl winner. And that gave me a thought. I should start a series about how the Niners will win the Super Bowl. This will be a three-part series breaking down their offense, defense, and special teams. And I hope to go down deeply into what each one needs to do to accomplish the feat of the Super Bowl. And I'm going to be using this Bleacher Report article as the base because in this article, they gave these guidelines. It said they needed to be an 11 ranked team offense, a six ranked team defense, a quarterback who threw for 3,125 yards and 21 touchdowns on 12 interceptions. And he also needed a running back who carried the ball 247 times for 1,067 yards and six touchdowns. They went on to list everything else listed on the screen. And it basically gave what a Super Bowl winning team needed. And throughout these videos, I hope to dive deeper into how the Niners can accomplish these goals. So without further ado, welcome to part one, the air raid or the offensive side of the ball. The first requirement, according to Bleacher Report, is the team needs at least an 11th ranked team offense and a quarterback who threw for 3,125 yards and 21 touchdowns on 12 interceptions. And as you guys know, San Francisco established itself, especially under Brock Purdy last year, as at least a number 11 offense in the NFL. You can't really name too many other teams with as much talent as San Francisco has on the offensive side of the ball. You have Debo Samuel, Christian McCaffrey, Brandon Ayuk, and we need to talk about their quarterback, Brock Purdy. And this is where things get a little bit dicey because the Niners don't actually know if Brock Purdy will be ready start of the season, but for today's argument, I'm going to say he will be for several reasons. So far this offseason, Kyle Shanahan's already said Brock Purdy is further along than he expected. And Brock Purdy has been able to throw recently three times a week without any setbacks. And right now he's working with his throwing coach, Will Helwitt, who is able to add five miles to his ball before the draft coming into the NFL. So I think he's in good hands with his mechanics. He's also has an orthopedic specialist constantly monitoring him and his arm to ensure he has a proper recovery. He has a true team on his side and the Niners have already come out, said he's the leader of the clubhouse, played like a top three pick. And if we're honest, he is and he did. So that brings us to the first question. If Brock Purdy is a quarterback that's capable of throwing for 3,125 yards, 21 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions, the first thing most people will do is go ahead and just look at his stats, divide them, and say, nope, not possible because he didn't do that last year. And that's a pretty simplistic way of looking at it because Brock Purdy first didn't play a full game against the Chiefs. Also, during their games against the Cardinals, Brock Purdy got yanked early. So I want to do a little bit more nuanced if Brock Purdy actually has the capability. So let's speak about the yards first. By doing this, I got an average of 226 yards per game for Brock Purdy. That equates to 3,842 yards per year. I think this is right in the realm of what Brock Purdy can do. I wouldn't even be surprised if he eventually got to that 4,000 mark. He's an extremely capable quarterback in the Niners system. And as he finds himself more and more entrenched into this offense and understands it more deeply, I think his yards total just continues to go up. Now that brings us to the next question, his interceptions and touchdowns, which is even more surprising. During last season, when Brock Purdy took over after Jimmy Garoppolo's injury, he never threw less than two touchdowns a game during the regular season. But I'll take off that Cardinals game once again, which equates to two touchdowns per game. And throughout the year, that would be a whopping 38 touchdowns from Brock Purdy, which 
just demonstrates Brock Purdy's ability to lead an efficient offense. Purdy doesn't just throw the ball in the end zone. He also keeps out of harm's way throwing, if I did the same type of analysis, 10.2 interceptions for the whole entire season. So going back to the Bleacher Report's statistics for the quarterback, they need a quarterback who threw for 3,125 yards. Brock Purdy statistically could go anywhere from 4,000 and 21 touchdowns where Brock Purdy, if you extrapolated, would do 38 first. 10 interceptions. So for me, it's obvious that this shows that Brock Purdy is a franchise quarterback despite everyone mentioning his limited arm strength. The fact is, he gets it done and gets it done at a high level. So while Brock Purdy has the potential to be a Super Bowl quarterback, what about everyone else on the offensive side of the ball? Well, we need to examine who is actually catching the passes from Brock Purdy. So Bleacher Report also had some statistics they thought would be helpful in determining a Super Bowl team. They need a number one wide receiver who caught the ball 73 times for 1,012 yards and five touchdowns, as well as a number two wide receiver who caught the ball 59 times for 882 yards and five touchdowns. The first thing I wanna mention is the number one wide receiver of this team is Brandon Ayuk, not Debo Samuel. Brandon Ayuk broke the thousand yard mark receiving last year. Debo Samuel didn't. He had an off year and during this off season, he's even said he's failed to live up to the potential he knows he has inside, which is Hall of Fame potential. The Niners don't have one wide receiver who can get 1000 yards and those accolades. They have two wide receivers as well as a tight end in George Kittle who is probably as deadly as both of them. So while it'd be easy to just break down the stats again, I'm not going to do that because if you look at Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk stats, they both went over 1,000 yards receiving in their career and you know George Kittle is capable of that as well. So things are looking good for the Niners hopes for a Super Bowl on offense, but they're still a major piece missing the running game. So next is the part that the Shanahan's love, and that's a running back who carried the ball 247 times for 1,067 yards and six touchdowns. And they want this in one running back. Shanahan's been able to get this out of tons of different running backs if you accumulate their stats, but recently they've been able to get a true bell cow in the back in CMC. And while he's a major addition, I want to take a spot out in this video to thank Bobby Turner for being the best running backs coach across the entire league. He stayed with the Shanahan's across his entire time and coached the best running backs, Terrell Davis. And just frankly, I love him as a coach and the way he's able to get the most out of what the Niners give him. But boy, did the Niners give Bobby Turner a lot with Christian McCaffrey last year. Christian McCaffrey ran for 1,139 yards and eight touchdowns. Pretty impressive, and that's even better than what Bleacher Reports wants from their running backs. They want a running back who ran for 1,067 yards, and Christian McCaffrey doesn't just have the option of purely running the ball. He's also the deadliest running back in the league coming out of the backfield which ultimately leads me to believe that Christian McCaffrey is someone that Bleacher Report would say could be a Super Bowl winning running back. So in this video I went over a ton of different skill positions but didn't really talk about the offensive line because Bleacher Report didn't mention it as a key factor to winning the Super Bowl but I believe it is and I want to just give a brief overview. The offensive line, in my opinion, is plenty strong, and Chris Forrester last year showed that with his development of Aaron Banks as well as Spencer Burford. I feel extremely confident in him and his ability to find and coach up guys. So with that being said, we need to go back to what Bleacher Report said and just make sure the Niners offense is actually capable of winning a Super Bowl like I think it is. First of all, the offense was better than the 11th ranked offense. The quarterback has an ability to throw way more than 3,125 yards and 21 touchdowns on 12 interceptions. Brock Purdy blows that out of the water. 
Their running back also is way better than their running back who can just carry the ball 1,100 yards. Christian McCaffrey's done 1,400 yards easily in the season. Furthermore, their number one and number two wide receiver both play like number one wide receivers and accomplish the goal of 73 receptions, 1,000 yards, and five touchdowns for a number one wide receiver. For all these points, I truly believe that the Niners have a great chance of winning the Super Bowl, and this is why they are always in the mix. So this is just part one of a possible three-part series where I break down each unit on San Francisco, their offense, defense, and special teams, and see if they have the capability of actually winning a Super Bowl. If this is something that you guys actually enjoy, it would mean a ton if you liked, subscribed, and commented down below that you enjoyed this. So I know that all this effort that I put into this video doesn't go to waste. It's a lot more effort than I put in most videos, so I hope you guys enjoy. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys Niners, have Niners, like many teams, look to the offseason for an opportunity to build a team to reach the Super Bowl. And well, that got me thinking recently, if the Niners actually have a Super Bowl winning team. And luckily for us, I found an article from Bleacher Report that says a formula to predict next year's Super Bowl winner. I've already covered the offense in part one, so if you're interested in that, I'll link it right here. But in this video, we're going to cover how the Niners are recreating the steel curtain and cover the defensive side. In this article, they gave these specifications. And some of the things that stand out on the defensive side of the ball is a sixth ranked team defense and a team defense that housed a player who garnered 11 sacks and a player who garnished six interceptions. In this video, I hope to break down if the Niners actually are going to be able to recreate the number one defense they had most of the year last year under a whole new coaching scheme. As many people know, the Niners defensive coach D'Amico Ryans left to go get a head coaching opportunity with the Houston Texans, who actually played for when he was a player. Regardless, this left the Niners in a sticky situation. They had one of the best defenses across the entire NFL, and while they didn't want to change too much about it, they did want to make it better if possible. So they brought in a different type of coach than they've been recruiting in the past, and the guy they decided to bring in is Steve Wilkes. He has much more experience than Robert Sala and D'Amico Ryans. He's also had head coaching opportunities, and his defensive style is also different. He's a much more aggressive defensive style than Robert Sala or D'Amico Ryans. For instance, in 2019, Steve Wilkes had a blitz rate that was top four across the entire NFL. And in comparison, last year, D'Amico Ryans had a blitz rate in the bottom half of the league. But what does this actually mean for Steve Wilkes coming over to San Francisco? Does this mean that San Francisco is going to get to the quarterback more or burned a lot more on big plays? And this is where I really want to argue that San Francisco is going to see a considerable jump in improvement from last year's defense to defense led by Steve Wilkes. And I know the Niners were number one most of the year last year, but they didn't leave the league in sacks, even though they probably had one of the most talented defensive lines across the entire NFL. This year, obviously, they've gotten stronger there, but with the addition of Steve Wilkes and adding more blitzes, you should see a jump in those sack numbers. But that's not the only thing you should see. You should also see an increase in the interceptions the Niners were able to get. Even though they were number one in the league, you always want more picks. And many people are worried that the Niners players just simply won't be able to cover opposing players one-on-one. -on -one. But Steve Wilkes recently spoke about this and said he believes he has everyone he needs in the building to play a little bit more aggressive man-to-man -man press coverage. And a player that I love in this solution is Daryl Luter Jr., who I believe Steve Wilkes hand-selected to develop into an outside corner. So with the addition of Steve Wilkes, I think the Niners have a defensive coordinator who will be able to repeat a similar level of proficiency as his predecessor in D'Amico Ryans. So therefore, according to the Bleacher Report article, I think the Niners defense can definitely be at least a sixth ranked team defense. The next part of the Bleacher Report formula 
was a defensive player who garnished at least 11 sacks last year. And while many teams, frankly, don't have that, the Niners have two. One, in their Defensive Player of the Year in Nick Bosa, who garnished 18.5 sacks, nearly double what Bleacher Report wanted. But not just that, they have Javon Hargrave coming in from the interior, rushing these passers and getting to the quarterback last year 11 times. And throughout his career, he's been extremely efficient rushing from the interior. The next two players that must be mentioned on the San Francisco defensive line is Eric Armstead, who definitely makes life easier for the rest of the defensive line. Really, his huge frame and being able to take on multiple blocks is a huge asset for the Niners, and that's why they gave him such a huge contract. But another player that I expect to make a massive jump from year one to year two is Drake Jackson. He's put on considerable mass, and the Niners kind of knew he would need about a year to develop into an NFL body. But even last year, Drake Jackson was good enough for three sacks and even one interception. So therefore, I think the defensive line is plenty strong enough to have a player to garnish at least 11 sacks. The next part of the Bleacher Report article we need to dive a little bit more deeply into is the defensive player who has the ability to garnish six interceptions. An area that we need to first address to answer the question if the Niners will be able to intercept the ball six times with a single player is the defensive secondary, specifically the corners in Charvarius Ward and Lenore. They both don't really pick the ball off a ton Ward because he doesn't get targeted and Lenore did have an uptick but they're not true ball hawks. Luter Jr. the Niners pick from this draft a corner might even push Lenore eventually for his starting job and I think he's more of a ball hawk than both of these guys. But another part of the secondary we need to examine a little bit more deeply is the players that really ball hawk and that's the safeties Talno Hufunga, Tashawn Gibson, and Jair Brown. All these guys are absolute ball hawks. Tashawn Gibson had five interceptions last year while Talno Hufunga had four and throughout his time in college Jair Brown had 10 plus interceptions the last two years. Furthermore, with the increase in blitzing that Steve Wilkes has planned and the new emphasis on press man coverage, I wouldn't be surprised to see more interceptions out of Hufunga, Gibson, and even Brown if he starts. But not just that, the corners will have more opportunities to make plays on the ball because the quarterback won't be able to predetermine where he goes, and therefore, it's going to throw a whole lot more picks, or at least that's what the Niners are hoping. So for me, I think the Niners do have players who have the ability to pick off the ball six times this year in either Brown, Hufunga, or Gibson. But we might even be surprised by the production from the corners in Steve Wilkes' new aggressive style defense. So while I could end uh, right now and complete the Bleacher Report formula and say the Niners have a Super Bowl winning defense, I think it would be a shame not to mention a huge part of their defense in their linebackers. The Niners have some of the best linebacker play across the entire NFL, largely thanks to Johnny Holland, Robert Sala, and D'Amico Ryans. All those guys had such an emphasis on the linebacking position, which is actually nice that Steve Wilkes is now emphasizing the defensive back position. I think it's going to make the Niners defense much more cohesive. But speaking about the Niners linebackers, they have some absolute studs there. They have Fred Warner, and everyone knows him as an all-pro linebacker, but someone that's not nearly talked about as much is Dre Greenlaw, and I think he's equally as good. He flies sideline to sideline and plays aggressively and makes players pay when they're running up the middle. And the Niners did lose a player who I think was phenomenal as well in the Ziz Al Shai year, but they do have plans to replace him with either the rookies they picked up this year in Jalen Graham or D Winters. But also, someone that I think is probably in the front running is Marcelino McCurry Ball. This guy is a baller who has the ability to fly around the field, and the Niners linebackers are kind of like 
DBs. Even Marcelino McCurry Ball is a safety turn linebacker, and that's going to help the Niners turn over their ball more. Breaking down the Niners defense a little bit more deeply using the Bleacher Report formula, I think it's clear that they do have a Super Bowl winning defense. But the question then remains, do they have a Super Bowl winning offense? And luckily for you guys, I did make a video answering this right here and I'll link it. But if you guys do want part three, let me know down in the comment section. It would also help me know if you like this video by actually liking the video and subscribing. Thank you guys so much for watching. It truly means a ton. And as always, let's go Niners. In recent videos, I broke down the Niners' hopes for winning the Super Bowl based on a Bleacher Report article that spoke about the offense and defense specifications of past Super Bowl teams and gave a formula to predict the next Super Bowl winner. But interesting enough, they left out an important part of the game, and that's the special teams part. They didn't even acknowledge what would be a good indicator of a punt average or even punt return specialist or anything along these lines. Rather, they just skipped over it and focused solely on offense and defense. And while I get the allure to do this, often the way you win games, especially in the playoffs, is through your special teams, whether it be a big block kick or even possibly a long field goal. So in today's video, I want to break down the Niners special teams unit a little bit more deeply, starting with their punter, Mitch Wisnowski, who they selected in round four in the 2019 draft from the Utah Utes. He's originally from Australia, his height is 6'2", and his weight is 220 pounds. So what I think Mitch Wisnowski does extremely well for the Niners is his ability to use his repertoire of skills effectively. He knows when to bomb it long and when to use some special kicks to spin the ball back and pin the other team inside the 20. Let's go over some of his 2022 season stats so you can understand what I'm saying a little bit more deeply. His punts, he was tied for 20th in the NFL. He only punted it 61 times last year. But he had impressive statistics on these punts. His longest punt was tied for fourth in the NFL of 74 yards of Boomer. He also pinned other people inside the 20 32 times. That was tied for seventh in the NFL. And like I said, that was only punting it 20th in the NFL. Also, there's times where I noticed Mitch Wisnowski changes up his punting style and it makes it extremely difficult for the opposing team to actually bring in some of his punts. Mitch Wisnowski has seen the best production when he only has to focus on punting. And luckily for him, the Niners thought about this when drafting the replacement of Robbie Gold. They brought in Jake Moody, who has a booming leg and will pin opposing teams way more often than gold to the 25. But more than just that, Jake Moody also has a stronger leg on kicking it through the uprights than gold. Gold was losing his strength in his career. He was still able to hit up in the close by the 40s, but Jake Moody also demonstrated an ability to do that throughout his college times. He's one of the most accurate Michigan kickers ever and leads the school in scoring. And so far, what we've seen out Jake Moody is an extremely confident young kicker who's been able to show off his booming leg. And I think that he's going to be extremely successful in the NFL. He's reliable on the underneath stuff and doesn't get in his head too much. He's an even kill person and I imagine him to be the foundation for this Niners special team unit going forward. So now that we've covered the Niners kickers in Jake Moody and Mitch Wisnowski, we need to talk about the return specialist. And that guy is Ray Ray McLeod. Every time he returns it, it looks like he's only one tackle away from breaking it big. He's also a contributor on the offensive side of the ball. And I think he's as good as any return specialist in the league and often it does come up to luck on this. But the Niners do have an emerging rookie that may be able to offer depth behind Ray Ray McLeod. And that guy is Ronnie Bell. He's returned kicks in college as well as punts and looked effective in the Big Ten Conference. So if he's able to remain effective 
on the Niners as a returner, this offers great depth and the ability for the Niners to look forward to winning the Super Bowl. So the question then becomes, do the Niners actually have a special team unit that's capable of winning the Super Bowl? And for me, I think they do. Their punter has all the skills that you want out of your punter, and your kicker is a rookie, but he did perform extremely well throughout college and has been considered one of the best kickers to ever come out of college, ever. So hopefully that projection lives up, and I think so far what we've seen in OTAs, it will continue over. But then brings up the question of Raymond McLeod. He's had fumbling issues in his career, but last year it did look like he cleaned those up and looks extremely strong returning the ball for San Francisco. Furthermore, the Niners' addition of Ronnie Bell through this draft adds more depth to an already loaded wide receiver position and a nice depth to that punt return specialist and even kickoff return specialist duty. So for the reasons I listed in this video, I think that the Niners do have a special teams unit that's capable of winning the Super Bowl, but the Niners do have room for improvement. I would like to see there be more speed injected on the kickoff and return duties. I know that Ray Ray McLeod is consistent, but it would be nice seeing maybe Danny Gray inserted one time in the game. But ultimately, these are just my thoughts, and I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. It would also mean a ton if you liked and subscribed. Thank you guys so much for watching.